Hi, I'm Parag Khanna, and in this Aspen Lecture, I'm going to explore how deep forces such as demographics and climate change are reshaping the American dream. America has long had the good fortune to take its bounteous geography for granted. In the early 1700s, we still didn't quite grasp how vast North America actually is. In the 19th century, after the Louisiana Purchase, America began to truly harness this continental potential. A new vision took root in American civilization, Manifest Destiny. The spirit of Manifest Destiny motivated American settlers to move beyond the Mississippi to tame the vast western frontier all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Many saw Manifest Destiny as a divine mission, as embodied in this 1872 painting by John Gast. President James Polk was the most vigorous advocate of expansionism, which brought with it the subjugation of Native Americans and tensions over slavery that sparked the Civil War. But by the 1890s, Manifest Destiny was complete. From sea to shining sea, between the Atlantic and the Pacific, Canada and Mexico. It was also an international enterprise. There was the purchase of Alaska in 1867 and the annexation of Hawaii in 1898 during the Spanish-American War. America today doesn't need to conquer more land. 330 million people seem to fit pretty well inside it. But that doesn't mean that Americans will stop moving. In fact, we might be on the cusp of the next manifest destiny. So what are the forces that will uproot Americans in the 21st century? The first is a plateau in the nation's population. Now the relationship between demographics, economics, and geography is a complex one. But America is aging rapidly. As baby boomers age or pass away, not enough children are being born or immigrants admitted to replace them. There are now more Americans older than 80 as there are babies under the age of two. As a result, there are ever fewer young people available to support, both physically and fiscally, the growing number of American retirees. Countries with high dependency ratios, such as Japan or those in Western Europe, tend to have slow growth, high taxes, and less dynamism than what America has demonstrated in generations past. And between the Trump administration's restrictive immigration policies and the pandemic, America's share of the annual flows of migrants has continued to decline steadily. And even with the immigration reforms underway, migration may remain far below the historical norm for years to come due to the pandemic, and political polarization. And now comes the pandemic baby bust. And it's the second one in just over a decade. After the financial crisis of 2008, economic insecurity caused a decline in fertility across the Western world. Now the COVID-19 baby bust will be even more severe. In fact, it looks like Generation Alpha, today's children and toddlers born after 2010, will be smaller than Generation Z, not just in America, but globally. Think about what this means. Today's youth are not just the present, they are also the future. So where today's youth go will literally determine the winners and losers of the 21st century. And while America's westward bound pioneers had to face the elements, they didn't have to contend with accelerating climate change. Some of America's most populous and economically significant cities, such as New York, Miami, Houston, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, are most at risk from rising sea levels, hurricanes, heat waves, and drought. Their GDP will suffer the most as temperatures and sea levels rise. For many centuries, most of America has fallen within what scientists call the optimal climate niche, the latitudes most suitable for comfortable human habitation and agriculture. But the climate niche is shifting northward. 
favoring the inland west, the Great Lakes, and the inner Atlantic regions. So is it time to think about America's next manifest destiny? Where should today's baby boomers move to have a climate resilient retirement? Many snowbirds are now buying properties in Michigan instead of Florida. Where should young people buy homes as they seek to settle down and invest their savings? Already, many of them are leaving New York and California in favor of Colorado, North Carolina, and Vermont. And for many millennials and Gen Z, the American dream is no longer about a house at all. During the pandemic, sales of RVs soared. Companies like Kibo offer not just the freedom of RV life, but even a sense of community at locations across the country. There are even tiny homes that can be towed or prefab houses that fit on the back of trailers. Imagine if all of them were electric vehicles that are solar powered. For more than 100 million youth, the mobile lifestyle makes a lot of sense. Less debt than a home, and you can either work remotely or keep moving to where the work is and learning skills along the way, whether academic or vocational. Humans have a fight or flight instinct, and our response to the climate change challenge and other disruptions is the right one, to move. More than 20 million Americans did move during the pandemic, but still far too many families and youth are stuck in place. They either can't afford to move or don't know where to go. And remember that less than 50% of American workers have or can work remotely. That's why I believe we have to redefine the American dream around mobility and skills, not just homes and degrees. We won't get out of a winner-take-all economy through handouts to the working class alone. People have to be empowered to go where they can learn new skills and take higher paying jobs. To really make the new American dream inclusive, we have to appreciate that physical mobility is essential to economic and social mobility. And as in the 19th century, we may need to build this next manifest destiny as we move to it. America still benefits from the transcontinental railway and interstate highway system, but we also need the next Oregon trails. Fortunately, though the 19th century manifest destiny was for millions a leap into the unknown, the next one doesn't have to be. It can be a set of policies pre-designed to take into account the risks of climate change, the locations of important resources, the key national industries, and the skills of the American people. We can relocate people to climate resilient zones where the population and economy can flourish, but also preserve our environment in the process. The Biden administration is going to spend trillions of dollars on an infrastructure plan and the Green New Deal. These can be the twin efforts to promote both mobility and sustainability. And in this next manifest destiny, we have to start thinking in terms of geology, not just nationality. Indeed, another relevant 19th century tradition in American thought is continentalism. At the time, this meant not only ejecting colonial powers such as the British, but also having more favorable regional relations with our neighbors, Mexico and Canada. The NAFTA trade agreement that went into effect in 1994 and the updated U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement signed in 2020 are evidence of a rising continentalist pragmatism. Already before the pandemic, U.S.-Canada trade and U.S.-Mexico trade each exceeded U.S. trade with China. But much more can be done to promote complementarity among North American societies, whether the exchange of resources, labor, or technology. These have also been the two busiest international border crossings on Earth by far. North America is the only multinational continent that enjoys durable peace and stability. Let's not waste it. Our collective manifest destiny is surely a North American union. And thinking about the next manifest destiny isn't just a North American task. It's a global one. Our civilization is defined by four layers of geography, natural, political, functional, and human. 
but all over the world, these four geographies are badly misaligned. Yet we don't have to be prisoners to today's borders or unsustainable economies. We have a moral obligation to move people to resources and technologies to people. In the coming two decades, the world population will likely peak at about 9 billion people. It's up to us to decide how we, how our children, can better distribute ourselves across 58 million square miles or 150 million square kilometers of territory. It's high time to start thinking beyond sovereignty to stewardship. For me, this is more than a thought experiment, more than a plea. It's a call to action. I've written a roadmap to help us evolve to this next stage of civilization, gradually, peacefully, and sustainably. Because a better world isn't just going to come to us. We have to move towards it. Thank you.